Christian singles and daters, in case nobody's told you, you actually control your odds of divorce. The future success or failure of a marriage is heavily determined initially by who you select to marry, which of course is influenced by who you're dating and how you're dating to begin with. So while you're out there on those dating apps, use boundaries and accountability wisely. Did you know that your choice of a marriage partner is an expression of morality? It's an expression of future good, saying that this world needs more of this kind of a person in it. Because it's not just a choice of morality for you, but it also impacts your family and your community. Think about your pastor at your church. Depending upon who you choose to marry, they will either get a kingdom couple added to their congregation, or they're gonna end up with long-term marriage counseling clients. Two of the key roles that women play in dating are this. Number one, moral regulation. And number two, selection. So moral regulation, do you have a articulated moral framework for your values, your beliefs, your boundaries, being able to articulate those and share those with another person as to why they're there and why you're holding fastly to those. Number two, selection. Can you successfully pick a man that will lead to a healthy, long-lasting relationship? Do you know what to look for in terms of discerning between desired traits in a man versus the counterfeits that are out there? Well, if you need help in either of those areas, we've got a course for you, Kingdom Coupling, How to Attract, Date, and Select a Godly Spouse. If you're interested, check out the link tree in the bio and you can find the course there. Men, you have two key roles when it comes to attracting and dating women. Number one, competency. Are you competent in a domain that women value? So if you're competent in playing video games, but women don't find those attractive, then you're out of luck. You want to be able to find an area of domain that the kind of woman you're trying to attract finds valuable and step into that space. And then number two, accountability, which is essentially summed up in Titus 2.2 that instructs men to exercise self-control, to be worthy of respect, and to live wisely. So will you be accountable to this woman, to her family and friends, and to your family and friends? Well, if you want to know more and a whole host of other things in regards to this topic, you can check out our full course called Kingdom Coupling, How to Attract, Date, and Select a Godly Spouse. You can find all the info in the link tree in our bio. One of the absolute greatest satisfactions in this life is to be truly known by another person and then to be freely chosen by them. That's the act of dating, engagement, and marriage. It leads up into this process of being more and more fully known throughout those sequences in the relationship and then ultimately culminates in the covenant of marriage where that person freely chooses you. But that greatest satisfaction in life comes at a high cost and with vulnerability because it also puts out there the opportunity to engage in one of our greatest fears, which is the fear of social rejection. The fear of social rejection is to be more truly known and then to be rejected. But there is no getting around that risk in order to get to the greatest satisfaction. So how to do that in a healthy way is to have proper boundaries and accountability and allow for timing and development and trust to occur in that dating relationship so that you can slowly, in a healthy way, turn over some of those cards that you've held so close to your chest with that personal information and personal experiences and for them to reciprocate. And then it leads to this beautiful moment where you each have the opportunity after having been more truly known now to freely choose.